Hi everyone, welcome back to my lecture uh, for introductions to compiler. So for our lecture today, uh, in this video, I will explain how to convert a high level language into assembly language. As I mentioned uh, earlier in a previous lecture, assembly language, uh, uh, no, a uh, compiler uh, is a program that can be, re be written in a many language. So different uh, processor will have a different set of syntax uh, to write the uh, assembly language. For example, uh, a, a compiler for assembly language used uh, in a Intel machine might be different with a language used for Sun machines. They might be different. So it depends on the processor. Different processor will have a different assembly language uh, syntax. Okay. So for for the purpose of this subject, uh, CSS five six nine. So we will be using a set of rules uh, that is listed in this uh, lecture note. So we will assume uh, there will be only one register R1, and all arithmetic operation must be done using R1. So we assume that we, we only have one register in our processor in our system. So what is the purpose of register? Register actually is a temporary memory that used for computation to generate a quick result. Uh, so, in order to for computer to compute, it need to mm, the variables or the numbers need to be loaded into the register, and uh, need to be processed inside the register, and the output will be uh, pushed back uh, to maybe to the terminals if you want to print it or to other memory locations. Okay. So, uh, for this lecture. Uh, translating the high level language actually from the uh, specifically from the atomic uh, statement into the assembly language is under the code generations um, phase inside compiler. So for this phase, for this uh, third phase uh, of a compiler, we need uh, we deal with how actually we instruct the uh, uh, the, we instruct the computer to deal with the registry register allocation with the allo register allocations means that how when we declare a variables how we want to tell the computer which should which computation should be logged first into the register okay so here is the possible uh, operations Okay, so we have a lot LOD where we want to load the data into the register. Okay, so we read as a lot R1 to A. Okay, so we add lot A to R1 and lot A to R1. A is a very big variable, so it's constant. So we want to load it into R1. We can have store, store data from register. Okay, so from the R1, we want to store it back to our temporary variable. We have push, push value on top of the stack. We can push A. We have a call function. For example, you want to call a function to print line. Uh, we want to print the output of our program. And we also have a compare, CMP, compare between two value. For example, compare A and the value in the T1. Okay. And we also have a arithmetic operations. Uh, add, subtract, multiplication, divisions, okay. and we also have a branching operation. This is uh, for our control structure, if, else, for loop, and while loops. So uh, for B, we have unconditional branches where uh, if the if the control structure doesn't have a uh, condition statement, condition expressions, okay. For example, we only have if statement without else, so the else part we can put it as B. 
which is unconditional because the else part doesn't have a condition expressions. Okay, under conditional, other conditional branch, we have BH to indicate if uh, if the two operand between let's say between two operand A and B, A is greater than B. Okay, greater than we'll use BH. If it's less than, we use BL. If it is greater than and equal, then we use BHE. BE is equal. Okay, B and E will be not equal. And BLE is lower and less than or equal. Okay, so L is level of a place. So we can you can uh, state what are the level of the operations. Okay, here is the representations for if else is quite similar to uh, the lesson on the atomic and how to convert the high level into atomic is quite similar. Okay, so first you need to compare. So here you don't use the SD like in the atomic, but you use the keywords compare CMP. And then uh, you look into the conditions, um, conditions of the if statement. And then the else part is the unconditions. Okay, then you need to process L1. What is the statement L1? L1 is the if statement. And L2 is the else part. Okay, so that is for if else. If it is for while loop, you need to set L1 at the beginning and you compare the condition statement and you set the condition as a L2. Okay, if the condition is not met, so you exit uh, the loop. So you put unconditional B, just B, uh, branching B. You can see here, branching B. B is without any conditions okay and then under l2 if it is true the condition is true we need to execute the statement okay if it's not so so you need to loop until the condition is false then if it is false it goes to l3 you need to execute uh, exit the process this is for a for loop. For loop, you need to have uh, initializations. So you need to load uh, the initializations, and then uh, uh, and then the next one is the operations for compare the uh, conditional statement. Okay, so put it under uh, L two. The next one is uh, uh, if the condition is false, you set it under L three. Okay, so under L2, if the statement is true, what are the process that you want to execute? So uh, put it under L2. So the loop will be uh, repeating until the condition is false. So to exit is under L3. Okay, for for loop, they have an increment and also a decrement, uh, I++ plus plus or I minus minus eh, after the L2 statement before they uh, exit the loop. Okay, for example, for simple statement like C equals to A plus B, so what you need to do is you need to indicate what to be loaded into a register first. So in this case, we want to load A into R1 and then you want the end then is to add B into R1 because A is already in R1. Now you want to add B into it and store the result into C. Okay, you store the result into C. So R1, uh, R1 actually is content A plus B. So store the result into C. That is the basic operations. Okay, another operations. Uh, for example, the second one, A equals to 14, B equals to 14. 12 so print a b so what you need to do is to load uh, equal 14 into r1 okay then you want to store a uh, a a into r1 okay so next one is to load uh, b which is the next uh, 12 equals 12 to r1 and you load a into r1 as well okay so then you subtract okay, B to R1 because R1 is or uh, A is already inside the R1. You, now you want to subtract 
the value of a and b after you have the subtractions so the value inside r1 the subtraction value is in r1 uh, place it into store it inside t1 position temporary memory so now you have the result of a minus b inside t1 now we want to push it push t1 so that we can call the function for print the output okay okay the third one a plus b plus c okay so this is very very simple so what you need to do is to load a first into r1 then you add b into r1 because a is already here okay next is to add c into r1 because a b is already inside here so here a here already got a b so here is a plus b plus c so store so now r1 here got a b c the value of a b c store it inside temporary uh, variable one t1 okay next look into the while loop okay so you have a level one two and three level one is for while the condition is uh, is true yeah uh, l2 uh, l3 is else okay so l1 is for the process of uh, conditions for the conditions l2 is for the statement here okay l2 is for the statement okay so first what you need to do is to load a into r1 then you add b so now your r1 got a plus b so you store the r1 and b inside t1 okay now you want to compare x and t1 okay so t1 uh, has a plus b just now yeah okay now you want to indicate if you want to compare what kind of operations you need for x and t1 so you indicate it here ble ble stand for less than and equals eh? yeah less than and equals l2 okay so we want to see l2 now what is in l2 in l2 uh, this, this one you need to indicate first you need to exit eh? if it's not true then you need to exit so under l2 you will run this statement lot uh, equals to inside r1 and then you lot x uh, you multiply it with x okay, i want to multiply with x so store the result into x okay and then b is the unconditional statement or for the one loop uh, this is for repetition so you need to repeat the process again until the condition is false Okay, number five is for if without else. So that's why you only have one level. So L2 will be uh, the exit statement. Eh? Is it because you don't have else. Okay, first you need to compare between A and B. Compare. So you are using BH. BH is for higher than eh? uh, or greater than. So greater than, you put it under uh, L1. So else is L2. So it should indicate if it is false then exit so if it l2 l2 do nothing because no statement there okay if it is l1 then you have to do lot if l1 then you have to do this a equals to a plus one so a you load a into r1 you add one into r1 and then store the result into a okay so that is for if without else so the last one for the for loop okay uh, the first you need to look into the a equals to one so you load equal into r1 then you store a inside r1 okay next one is you load uh, uh, this is for initialization next one is on the conditions eh? so you load uh, equals 20 into r1 so you store uh, r1 into temporary uh, variables okay then you compare so the first step is to compare a and t1 okay the comparison is lower or 
equal, eh? lower or equal, so it is under L2. So uh, L2 will process the uh, the condition, whether it is true or false. If it is true, then it run L2. If it is false, then it run L3. So in this case, L3, you do, do nothing. Eh? Do nothing. So it is exit here. So if it is true, L2, what you do is to load Y into R1. So this this will be L2. Uh, you load Y into R1. Uh, equals 1 into R1. You add you add the value. And store the result into Y. And store the result into Y. Okay. Next process is, you have done with the first statement. There is another statement here, which is, which is done after you done y equals to y plus 1 because the increment statement you would do uh, before you exit the loop okay you normally done the increment or decrement before you exit the loop so before you exit the loop you will do the increment here so you load a into r1 uh, add about 1 equals 1 into r1 and the value you store it inside a so here it will check whether the, the uh, condition is true or false. So it will go back to L1. So the process will go back to L1 here. And do the comparison again. Until the condition is false, it will go to L3. Okay. So that is how you convert the high-level language into... Um, assembly language for the code generator for uh, third phase of the compiler so third phase of the compiler it normally deal with uh, how you store information in the register how did you use a register for your computations if you look for the second stage of a second phase of the compiler they don't look into how you store, how you load the information into register. They just want to divide, they just want to split the operations, become smaller chunk of operations, eh? individual operations. But when they move to the third phase, they will look into uh, how to handle, how to run each of the atom uh, statement, atomic statement inside uh, registry, uh, register. So, in order to, to process uh, or in order to compute the atomic uh, statement, the token need to be uh, loaded inside the register. Uh, only then it can uh, do the processing part and can compute. Yeah? So, that is how the process of uh, translating uh, into assembly language. Okay, thank you very much.